Hey everyone, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, and TikTok and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao or Make Moments Matter. I just spent a couple minutes trying to get TikTok live to work. I don't think it's gonna work, but I'm just gonna chalk that up to me being a millennial, not being able to figure it out yet. You know what? I'm gonna get on the, the, the chat groups and the boards and figure it out. So maybe coming soon to, to TikTok live, don't hold your breath. Okay, so um, I'm excited to talk to you about uh, tonight about creating a lesson from scratch, how you might do that, um, and talk you through the process that my student teacher and I went through today as we were working on a lesson for first grade, and like maybe what that looks like so you can see from, um, you know, like see what your process is like compared to my process and how that maybe sort of works. Um, so that's coming up in just a second. A couple quick, quick things if you hear me talk about a resource, an idea, something you're very interested in in this video and you're like, where can I get that? I have a whole page on my blog dedicated to the links and things I talk about in these videos. If I say the links page, that's what I'm talking about. At the bottom of the caption of wherever you're listening to this um, or watching this, you should be able to find a direct link or you can just go to my blog, makemomentsmatter.org and you can click on the videos tab to find um, a direct link there or to find all that information. Okay, um, a couple upcoming things. If you are in uh, Oklahoma City area or surrounding states, honestly, if you, if you want to drive up from Amarillo or wherever, um, you totally can. I'm going to be in Oklahoma City this weekend for um, the Oklahoma ORF um, chapter workshop. That's this weekend, uh, February 10th. Um, come out and join us. It's going to be really fun. I'm doing um, a session called Square One and Beyond, which is like basics of Orf Show Work Plus. Um, and that's going to be uh, pretty exciting, I think. Uh, then I'll be in New Jersey at the New Jersey Music Educators Association Conference. That's in about two-ish weeks. That'll be the end of February. Feb well, close. Uh, February 22nd, 23rd. Hope you'll join us there in Atlantic City. And then if you want to plan far out on March 23rd, I'm going to be in Augusta for the Greater Augusta Orf Chapter Workshop. Um, I'm very, very excited about that. I hope that if you are in the northeast part of Georgia or, I don't know, South Carolina and you want to drive over, come over and join us. It's going to be a super great time. Um, you can find out more details about all of that on my blog, makemomentsmatter.org. One last thing, because I would be sad if I didn't mention this to y'all, there's a big TPT sale coming up. So if you have items that you wanna buy from Teachers Pay Teachers and you haven't yet, there's a big sale coming starting tomorrow, um, Tuesday and Wednesday, so that's February, what, six and seven. Um, and I'm doing a gift card giveaway on my blog with, um, or on my Facebook page with some friends right now. So if you go to my Facebook page, um, you can find that there. And then all the sales stuff starts tomorrow, Tuesday. Okay, so let's talk about um, this uh, lesson that my, my student teacher and I have sort of started working on and are working through. We have a little bit more time to work on it tomorrow. It uh, goes live, like we have to, um, we, she has to teach the lesson on Wednesday. Um, and so where is this coming from? So uh, in the student teaching uh, sort of process through this year, um, there have been times where uh, my student teacher has taken my lesson that I've done and she has just tried it or has tried portions of it where she has seen me teach it and then she teaches um, a bit. There are other times where I've given her um, an idea or I've given her um, um, I've given her a concept that I need her to, to um, to extrapolate on or, or do more with and she's gone to my old lessons or gone to resources we've talked about we've compared notes and then we work things out together and um, either co-teach a lesson or she teaches it or I teach part of it, it depends um, but just a way to sort of help her figure out that lesson building process um, and, and, and there are a lot of times too where um, well now Elle is in, at the point where she is now taking over classes and teaching things sort of all on her own. And so um, I said, well, here's our district pacing guide and here's all the district materials and here are all the extra things. Um, you can cr create whatever lesson you want. It just needs to stay on the pacing guide. Um, here are all the things that we've already done this year. We've already taught this year. So don't teach something we've already taught. And let, I mean, don't teach it as if it's brand new. You think about how you could reteach or relaunch uh, that concept. but. Um, we, we went through and talked about all that whole process of pacing guide and, and curriculum and all the resources that we have. Um, and sometimes she'll go into my old lessons because I keep copies of my old lesson plans and she might take them and say, okay, how'd you do this? Or I want to modify and can I, you know, teach, I've not seen you do it, but can I teach certain things? And sure. 
Um, but now she was going in and was saying, okay, well, here are the concepts that we need to teach or that need to be done this quarter or need to refresh or whatever. And I want to do my own kind of a lesson. Um, so how? <laughs> and so um, we, we went through and um, so a couple of the concepts that she was interested in, we, we just basically introduced um, quarter notes, eighth notes, and quarter rest, at least identified them. We've, we've used icons, we've used um, just uh, simplified versions of things, but like talking about the, um, like the actual note values, identifying them, using their correct names, and now we're trying to put it into practice. That's one of the things that's going on um, with the pacing guide right now. Also, in the pacing guide, um, you're supposed to start introducing um, the percussion family and its um, subfamily. So in under the percussion family, there are um, little subheaders, right? There's uh, shaker instruments, scraper instruments, um, wood instruments, metal instruments, and membranes. Some people call them drums. I use membrane. It's my personal preference. Um, oh, and sound effect instruments, I guess, but we don't really introduce that in the first grade level because it's, it's a little advanced. So, um, so shaker scrapers, woods, metals, and membranes. And so she was like, is there a way that we can sort of do several of those things? Sure. Yes. And so, um, she, I was like, well, where do you want to start? What do you want to focus on? And she was like, I guess, well, another thing in the pacing guide is, um, identifying rhythms and words. And um, that's something she'd seen me do in other grade levels. She's like, can we do that with the current grade level? Sure, well, let's figure out how we can do it. So um, we said we'd you know, start with, I wanna make sure that we do the instrument families. Okay, well, what are they gonna do with it? Well, I would like them to play some of the instruments. Cool, okay. Um, are they gonna play a poem? Are they gonna play just rhythm reading? Are they gonna do, you know, how do you want them to play? And she was like, well, it'd be cool if they could do a little bit of rhythm reading. I was like, okay, so if we do that, um, you could put a, well, when we talked through ideas, and one of the ideas we came up with was could, we, we could put up, you know, like static rhythm patterns on the board. So ta, 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 di, ta. And I say ta, di, not ti, ti for um, rhythm syllables. Uh, but if you're a TT person or a due day person, just know that I'm saying an eighth note there, or eighth note pair there. So we could like just read uh, ta di ta, ta di ta, and the kids could read it, and then they could play it. So, um, you know, on, on a non-pitch instrument, they could clap it, they could pat it first, and then if we wanted to hand out non-pitch instruments, we could. Okay, great, well, what else could we do? Um, we could put up multiple lines. They could play multiple different things. It could become like a competition where you have one line of kids play and read it, and then the next pair line of kids play and read a different rhythm. Just sort of compare to like see how they do it. And that's a cool thing because then it, it kind of feels like a competition, but not really. Uh, but also then kids, not all kids are participating all at once. So, you know, like you do like a team at a time and then they feel camaraderie with their team and um, it gives you a chance to single out, you know, only four or five voices at a time to really see if they're understanding the rhythm reading. That's one thing we could do. Okay, well, what else could we do? And um, Ella said, okay, you have those little cards with like, um, you did food words and I have a copy of those here. Um, a couple of those here. It's these little cards I've made. I've made a lot of different versions. Um, so on the card, you, if you're listening to this, sorry, you can't uh, see, but I'll explain. On, on this little card, um, it says popcorn. It has a picture of popcorn. It has uh, two quarter notes, so popcorn. And then here's another one, watermelon. And it has a picture of watermelon, it has the word, and it has toddy, toddy, watermelon. So each card has a food word and has the name of the food word and a corresponding rhythm, what it goes with, right? Um, and she was like, okay, well, could we maybe incorporate those? And I was like, we could, um, but le let's pull out all, because I have a bunch of different themes of these. I was like, let's pull out the different ones that I already have printed and have here at school, and let's see if there's a different theme that you would want to maybe use instead. We can use the food, that's totally fine, but let's see if there's something else you might want to use. So we pulled them out and said, okay, well, what if we had, well, so I had like, the ocean ones printed, I had instruments of the orchestra printed, I had Star Wars printed, I had uh, farm animals printed, I had food printed, and maybe one other one in there. I can't exactly remember. Anyway, so uh, we looked through and she was like, ooh, wait, didn't, ooh, if we're gonna do this rhythm reading, maybe we could include like something else, like a poem or a song. And she's like, there are a lot of songs for animals of like barnyard animals. In fact, we had, we were teaching a song in first grade right now, uh, wake up you sleepy heads and go and find, 
go and find the cattle. Wake up, you sleepyhead, and go and find the cows. Could maybe that be integrated? I was like, yes, you could absolutely integrate that. So let's pull out the barnyard animals. So he pulled out the barnyard animals. Um, also because the, the the rhythms of the orchestra would maybe get a little bit complex for second grade and also the Star Wars would maybe get a little bit complex for second grade. The beauty of these cards is that if the kid knows the rhythm, knows the food, they can make a great connection between the food and um, the, the rhythm of the word. Um, or if it's animals, it could be like sheep, would be like quarter note, quarter rest, or like... Um, Lion, if you're doing the zoo version, lion would be like ta ta. So, but if they don't know the word, like if it's like X Wing Fighter, like in Star Wars, and they don't know that, it's a little bit harder to make that connection. So, you really want to choose words that match the kids' understanding and grade level. So, we looked and we said, okay, farm animals, great, let's go with that. So, we pull out the farm animals, and some of the um, options in there, there was like calf, goat, um, there's, and it's not just all animals, uh, farm things, um, hay bale. Um, angry chick, donkey, old rooster, llama, farmer. There are all these different words. And so um, we said, great. Okay, so we pulled those cards out and we're like, so we were talking about having like a line of rhythm on the board that the kids could read. But now if we give them these little baggies full of these cards, they could create their own rhythm to read. And all these cards have the notes that guess what the kids just really learned. So ta, ta di and uh, rest, quarter rest, wherever there is one there, right? So the words have combinations of either uh, quarter notes, quarter notes and eighth note pairs, or quarter notes and quarter rests. So the kids could conceivably go through and pull out four cards and put them together and do like um, milk, bucket, green, tractor, duckling, horse. And they would have uh, ta, ta, di, ta, ta, di, what did I say, duckling? Ta, 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 rest. So the kids could, in small groups if they wanted, go through and make a four card pattern and have basically eight beats worth of rhythm to read. Okay, cool. And so then we were talking about, well, how could we maybe set this up? What could we do? So we talked about if, um, if we wanted, we have um, our iPads and we could mirror. And so my student teacher at like the teacher desk could put out four cards and show the kids like how you might walk through putting four in a row, why you might choose different things. Um, maybe we give them a challenge of all cards with a yellow background, all cards with a blue background, or maybe we say all animals with four legs, or we say all birds, or we say all non-animal but farm related things or whatever to give them a category of something to choose. And they just put it in order and, um, and we would then read it. So, uh, my student teacher might go through and do that using the iPad, mirrored iPad as like a document camera to show the kids what she's doing. And um, so then she was like, you know, thinking about how we could incorporate the instrument playing. So maybe we could uh, have the kids play their rhythms. I was like, great. So at this point, we have a couple things going. We have our bags full of, of words with the very simple rhythms. And the idea that um, Ella, my student teacher, would show the kids how to put it in a four card, like in a row, and then we could read through all together, we could clap it all together or do body percussion all together, um, or we could hand out rhythm sticks or whatever. That was where we were in the process. I was like, cool, okay. Before we move on, how could we like separate them in groups? Like how, how many groups do you want? Or how, you know, cause if we're gonna give them bags, what are we gonna do? And we decided, well, maybe we could do like really small groups, about two or three kids in a group. Maybe we do eight groups and just have them sort of around the room in a circle position, and, you know, sort of in a circle. So there's like different, you know, around the room um, and they sit in their little small group. And so um, they could work together like that. And I said, okay, so you know what you could do? You could, in their small group, you show a rhythm, they all read, let them mimic, do their four card rhythm, and then they read their own. And then well, they could play it on a non-pitched instrument. You could give each group a non-pitched instrument to play it. And so we were talking about how we wanted to introduce or, or talk of, not introduce, they played all these instruments before, but introduce the concept of the different families. So like metals, woods, shakers, scrapers, and um, membranes. What if each small group got, uh, you know, tone blocks or um, finger symbols or something where they could play the rhythm they made? So 
let me show you a visual sort of what you're thinking at this point. So for thing, we have um, eight little groups um, around the room, eight groups, about two or three kids. Each one has a bag full of uh, cards that have farm animals, farm things on them. Um, and in that bag, so they'd have at their little station, they would have a bag and they would have a set of instruments. Uh, so e each group would either have like, um, you know, wood block or um, if we're trying to give them variety of metals and um, shakers and scrapers and membranes and woods, um, we could do like, yeah, okay, so let's see, said wood block. And then we said we could do, um, let's see, a metal. We could do, well, let's just say for the sake of tonight, cowbell. Um, here, I'm drawing a little visual here. And then, so woods, metals, um, shakers, we could do egg shakers or easy. And if we want to do a membrane, we could do, uh, if we want to do something with a mallet, you could do like a lollipop drum or you could do hand drums. Hand drums are easy too. So I actually drew this picture um, with Ella and I said, okay, so if the kids were set up kind of like this, um, you, there are like little groups around the room in sort of a big, it's like a big circle around the room. So they're not just in rows and little groups, but it looks kind of like a circle if you had, you know, bird's eye view. And uh, each one has a set, an instrument with it. So they would have a little bag with the rhythm and then they'd have cowbells. And the next group would have egg shakers. The next group would have hand drum. The next one would have wood blocks and so, so on around the, around the circle. And I, and I said, so what if you did um, a little, like a rotation? So maybe when they get to each spot, each little center, basically, you could have a rhythm that you created up on the board. Everyone could read it. They would read that rhythm. Um, they could clap that rhythm and then they could play it on their new instrument if you want. And then you could give them a minute or two to work with the cards that they have. They can create their own rhythm and they can clap their own rhythm and they can play their own rhythm. And then after a minute or two, you can have them rotate. It's basically like you're, you're infusing centers into this one class, but we're doing it all together as a class. They're doing the same thing at each center, only the only thing it changes is you would move from, you know, your center and your process has um, cowbell to the next time you would have egg shaker, the next time you would have woodblock or whatever. So the process stays the same. Each time they sit down at a new center, they would have a bag of cards and they would have an instrument. And their job is first to look at Miss, uh, to look at Ella's projection up on the board where she has come up with a little four card pattern. And they have to read her pattern and then pat her pattern or clap her pattern and then play it on their new instrument. And then they have so little work time. So that was the process. And then after their work time, they play their thing and then they rotate. Well, what could they do when they rotate? I'm like, hmm, is there a poem or a song or something we could add in? Hmm. So that's when we pulled out our, our books and our resources and I pulled out um, 150 American folk songs to sing, read, and play. A classic. Um, I was like, I don't know, I'll look through songs. And then we pulled out some of these um, books from GIA, the Fire Robin uh, things. So there's like the book, I pulled out the book of finger play, action, uh, finger, play, uh, finger Plays and Action Songs because this has a lot of little poems, a little short thing. Because I was like, we, you know, you don't want a super long song or something in between, just something maybe you could sing or play while they moved. Um, what could we do? And we were going through and looking through. And then we were also pulling out all the songs and poems we'd already done this school year. What could we do? What could we do? Um, and uh, and I was like, wait, we're doing farm animals, right? Okay, so, because I found one in the um, in the Fire Robin book that I was like, this is fun. Uh, this is the sea, the wavy sea. Here is a boat and here is me. All the fishes down below wiggle their tails and away they go. That's a fun short little thing. And it's like wiggling and they're moving. They're moving fish. So it'd be cool for moving. And we're like, oh, but we are. We could switch to the ocean words if we want to do that, but we're, we're doing farm words. So we kept looking, kept thinking. And then um, I, we were looking through and we realized that earlier this year we'd done a version of um, this little piggy went to market, this little piggy stayed home, this little piggy had roast beef, this little piggy had none, this little piggy went wee, 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 all the way home. And so we, I had done a version of that earlier in the year. It was not that exact version, a slightly different version. I'd seen it in an orf workshop years and years ago. Um, and But they already knew that. I was like, okay, so then they you don't have to teach that if they've already learned it. That can be their transition song. When they hear that poem, they know they need to put their things down and move to the next station. 
So the end of the, the the lesson ended up being we're gonna start with the whole group thing where they're sitting and just facing the board. We pull out the cards and mimic like or talk about how it works. And then we get them into groups, into small groups around the room. Each one has a bag full of cards and they also have a non-pitched instrument. And um and so as they go around, um, at each spot, they're going to have um, a couple things to do. First, they're going to read the rhythm that we put up on the board that we've created. It's going to switch every time. And they'll read our rhythm, they'll do body percussion, and then they'll play. Then they get to play with their own the cards that are in their station. They'll create a rhythm, they'll do body percussion, and then they'll play that. And then at, at whenever time it's time, we'll give them the signal, put your instruments down, put your cards down, we'll say the poem, and as we say the poem, they'll rotate. And they'll move to the next station, we'll do the same process. They only need, the, the cool thing about this with centers is they only need to get through four stations. It's because if they get through all four stations, they will have played a wood, a metal, a membrane, and a shaker. They will have interacted with the content that we were, that we're trying to reinforce, quarter notes, eighth note pairs, and quarter rests. They will also be composing. Honestly, they'll be sit in small groups. They'll be working through and they'll be creating their own rhythms. Um, so there's a lot involved in this lesson and it could go wrong. We're going to talk about it again tomorrow. I sent um, Ella home and I said, okay, think about this. Think about the procedure, how you want to introduce it, how you're going to do it and um, work through because tomorrow we have one more day to talk through it before it happens on uh, Wednesday because the new rotation starts on Wednesday and Ella will then teach it on Wednesday. So we're going to talk more about it tomorrow. I think it's a pretty fun lesson actually because they're going to have some autonomy. They're going to have some work time um, because I'm still going to be in the room with her the first day she teaches that I'll be there to help, you know, like wander around and walk through kids so that after that first, and I even said, uh, you know, after you teach a, a first time lesson for the first time, sometimes you realize, ooh, that did not work or that rotation thing I said was didn't work. I need to be clearer with X, Y, and Z. You learn some of those prompts of like, I need to tell them okay they got to do this or they got to remember to whatever so that might be something that changes our process once we teach the lesson once um but for right now i think it's a sort of a fun lesson it's a fun idea um along the way though we started with just what are the standards what do we want them to do um how can we do that we pulled some of the resources we already had available um i was like you could go out and find another poem but if you have to teach them a song or a poem that's going to cut down on the time you get to do stuff so it's great that we're pulling a poem and a story they already know um if we had to go and print some of these cards or do some of that that would take a little bit more time but we already had the farm cards printed and we could totally pull those out and use it so it's a lot of things kind of work together if we need to change the poem or change the um the cards we use or things like that we we can um, but for now, kind of, I think it'll work together. Is it going to take the whole class period? No, which is good because there are other songs that we want to teach in, in this lesson. But, but will it take a bit of time? Sure. So what I'm telling um, Ella as she's planning is plan for like an opening activity, maybe a song they already know, or maybe you want to teach a short little new song, whatever you want to do. Then we'll go through this process, but leave buffer time at the end. It may be, you know, this is always true with a new lesson. It may be that like it fills all the time. It goes longer than you think. It may be that it goes way less time than you think. It may not work at all. It may fall apart. So we need to have a backup. What's that backup going to be? Um, and a great backup I said to Ella was, what's a song or game they've already done in the year that they already love that they you could do again and would help reinforce things already, but you wouldn't have to teach a brand new thing because if you're doing a brand new lesson and it doesn't go the way you expect to then have to try and teach another new song or concept is really frustrating. So uh, we're going to go through tomorrow and pull out like a backup lesson in case this falls flat. What could we do it in the meantime? Or what do we do if, if it just runs way shorter than we thought? What are some things we could do? So that's what we're going to be planning on tomorrow. If you have thoughts or ideas about this process, you're like, hey, there's this other cool poem you could do, or here's a fun book that you could add in as well. Please leave those in the comments um, uh, for, for our lesson for this rotation or for anyone else who hears us and wants to try it in the future. Um, it could be really helpful. But this was just kind of the process of like how we crafted that letter, how... Sorry, my basset hound's in the room and she has a little bit of a cold, so she's sneezing a lot and shaking. So sorry about that. Um, but this is the process of how we sort of created this lesson, crafted this lesson. I hope this gives you some ideas um, and some thoughts as you go through creating your own lessons. Um, but definitely questions, comments in the comment section. And um, I know that always helps folks as they're learning and um, and getting ideas. So if you have a great lesson or a great idea you'd love to share, drop that in the comments. Um, and I will see you all 
next week for another Musical Mondays video to tell you how this lesson went and to talk about something else new. All right, bye-bye, everyone. Have a great night.